So there's good news and then there's bad news. So here it is. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Ormond Simmentals. This is Chris. All right, it is Monday morning. Still kind of Monday morning. Uh, it's around 11 o'clock, but I took a half day today because this afternoon we're doing preg check. And along with preg check, that means we got to sort out the calves and all that stuff, and then our weaning process starts. So Dad had called me earlier today uh, and said, you know, hey, should I get a full, a full skid of that corn oats molasses? Well, a full skid would be a ton. We both only have half ton trucks. So it was a good thing he only got the 25 because we're squatting a little bit here. Uh, so this is the corn oats molasses. Uh, we wanted a couple bags of shavings for inside the barn for today. And then under that guy is one of the 30% lick tubs that we will we will have in we've done 30s and 20s and honestly both have worked in the past i just i like having a lick tub out during weaning time really honestly for us between the lick tub and uh the second crop hay the really fine soft hay seem to be like the two perfect things uh for us for weaning uh it gives it gives the chance for those calves to be around something that's got good minerals good nutrition high energy all that kind of stuff but not at the bunk and that's basically what the lick tub is for so um, and it also that uh, that licking and saliva helps with um, uh, digestibility and all that kind of stuff too now is when the fun begins some of the cows are actually coming up for water so dad's gonna grab a bale quick and we'll see what happens we always go with the idea that as long as we can get a good chunk of them in, um, that we'll shut this gate back here by the blue water and then um, just let them kind of filter in naturally or as much as we can. But I, I think we'll get a good chunk of them. Once they realize that it's uh, a second crop bale, they'll probably be a little bit more, a little more eager. went really really well too well so they are pretty content and they're gonna be pretty content for a little bit and we'll give them some time to kind of chill out a little bit they're obviously pretty relaxed but then the name of the game is calves will stay back there and then we'll bring the cows into the short shoot and then in here we do have to sort out two of the bull calves might have mentioned that too uh, to let them get cut and I think we're gonna go with well one the obvious choice no nuts and then um, we'll go with the fleck bowl so all right let the fun begin this usually isn't too bad trying to get the girls out DG 75 first on the list Got a couple coming. And we got PZ. It's really just once you start getting a wave of them, is holding some of these calves back. Then you'll get cows that all of a sudden remember that, oh hey, I've got a calf back there. And then dad will work that gate back there. And then we already got some that are like, oh wait, mom's going that way. I want to go that way too. See if we can grab some out of this group right here. There goes Whitey Gerds. 
And there goes Joey. You just gotta keep working these guys around, and get some flow going. There we go. Moms usually know what's going on. Let's get rid of this group. Come on, DJ. Let's go. And then we just keep repeating that process and hopefully the calves don't give us too much grief. That was a big improvement for Factor. Only took him two times. He went in. So that guy and no nuts here are gonna be our cut steers this year. We're gonna try and, try and get them in the back pen, but we can't go all the way to the back because Factor's back there, so we gotta try and get them in the side. So that ought to be fun, you know. But it's either gonna work or it won't work. The only bad part about putting them back there is that they can crawl out easily but we'll have everything set up so it's not like they're gonna get out out okay so we had our first difficulties of the day which is to be expected um, the black steer not really a problem to move around he's pretty chill um, the full blood he's kind of reverting back to when we tagged him he's he's a little he's pretty spry Okay, per the huge, uh, cows are getting virus shield uh, 6, VL5, HB, and then an Ivamec warmer. So, pretty standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, you're 
A set of twins, and she took one of the twins. Oh, right. and for whatever reason, she didn't breed back. And we kept her. Yeah, well, she's pregnant now. Big one, too. What's that? Yeah. Yes. Second group, so a couple weeks later. So She's a first calf pepper and twins. Yeah, not cool. I was just, <clears throat> I'm just glad that she's bred. there's good news and then there's bad news um, 34 out of 38 are bred that does mean we have four opens which is like a 10% follow rate which I don't know I'm not really crazy about that um, so that's kind of a, a good and bad okay that is open that's kind of a good and bad, you know, we got 34 out of 38. Um, one potentially could be bred. Uh, I have a, I have her marked down for getting bred a month ago. So she could be bred, but then do you want a calf that's, that's gonna calve in late June? You know, that's another question. Um, the other bad is that we, we knew Joey was probably going to be open for whatever reason. Joey's been cycling all summer long. Joey's been on our list of animals to get rid of anyways. I'll let you watch these girls go out first. So Joey here has already been on, was already on the list for animals to get rid of anyways, just because of her 
little bit of an attitude issue so that's that was one reason so she was gonna go bye bye anyways the two that really annoy me is Lily our yearling heifer um, came open which really surprised me I hadn't seen her in heat I thought I maybe seen her in heat in the middle of summer but that was it. Then the other one that really irritates me is that Cora is open. That one really annoys me because I really like Cora. Her disposition and all that stuff definitely, definitely annoys me. So the Fleck crew took a real hit, is gonna take a real hit this year, unfortunately. So yeah, it is, it's really frustrating when they're nice animals. Um, and they've got genetics. They've got nice genetics. They're nice animals and they don't stick. I mean, obviously the bull got the majority of the vat. I mean, obviously the bull got a lot of animals bred, but I don't know if it was when some of those animals were coming back into heat, we had a lot of, we had a lot of heat, temperature heat, higher heat that just did not bode well for either cow or bull. Come on, guys. So, don't know, but that really annoys me because I would like a nice chunk of fleck in our herd because I think it's it's been a nice little change of pace. So we just dumped out a little bit of that corn oats molasses. And I will show you that stuff. So here it is. And it looks like, sometimes they'll, they'll run it through the roller and the corn is like actually mashed. But here it looks like they, when they ran it through the roller that it just cracked it. So I'm sure it depends on what setting they use and all that kind of stuff. But I love the smell of that stuff because there's, there's so much molasses in there. And there's just, the style of molasses they use is uh, must be a, a more of a liquid style because it does have some dampness to it. But it smells good, looks good. So hopefully they like it. <clears throat> hopefully we have a little bit better or quicker response to ground feed than we did last year. And that was kind of part of the reason we wanted to try the corn oats molasses right away. The other part of that is uh, we're not gonna be able to grind until Saturday. So there's that Still a little little peeved. I'll be peeved for a couple of days So dad's gonna go grab a couple of bales. We do have hay in these feeders yet um, But we're just gonna fill them up and then the calves aren't reaching for anything We do have their lick tub out there. That's all set Rangeland 30%. Um, we'll see how they like that. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll like it. I don't have a trace block for them yet, but I will get that this week. Not a huge deal. The other thing we're gonna do is the opens are gonna stay in the back, the loafing shed area back there, and we're gonna put a bale of first crop back there and actually let the bull back out with them. Not for any purposes of breeding, um, but just for the fact that then we don't have to feed him inside. He has access to water, he has access to free choice hay, and keep him happier. Cause he'll be like, I got screaming kids on one side and I got ladies on the other side. You know, it's like, kill me now or something. But that, that'll make him happier, he'll be calmer. He's actually been really good in the back pen. I mean, he hasn't made a sound back there. So yeah, we'll let him out in a little bit. But we do have to sort all the calves away from those opens first. Whew, ready for a break. Well, took me a little bit, but everybody is sorted out. And I did notice there were a couple of calves that were licking on the grain, but as you can see, they're going after that hay and they're going after the lick tub. Right now they're pretty chill and this is, this is pretty typical. Um, you know, the calves are kind of at that age where it's like, 
Ma, ma, I can hang out by myself for a little while. Um, <laughs> but then later tonight, they'll be like, wait, wait, mom, you're, you're over there now? Like, you know, and then things start get a little excited. It looks like quite a few of our AIs uh, stuck. Um, obviously, Cora did not stick, which ticks me off because she was a kingpin. Um, I'm really, really excited about that bull. And then, um, and then Lily didn't stick to her cavil. Um, but there's a good chance that Cora or uh, that Cher stuck to her um, dominion, and there's a good chance that Barb stuck to her kingpin. So we still might get a kingpin. Hoping, hoping. So it's definitely nice having this extra area. We would need, we would definitely need this extra area for the amount of animals we have. Taking advantage of this feeder a little bit more. I think overall the day went pretty darn well. Um, I'm obviously going to be annoyed about couple of those opens but if they were bred then we would be picking bread cows to sell so prank check day is quite a bit of work I mean obviously you got to run X number of animals through the chute and got to get them prank checked and we got to find out who's who in the zoo we are coming to the end of the day and I'm gonna call it the end of the video if you guys have any questions about how we wean how it goes and things like that. Stay tuned, you're gonna get updates. And uh, if, obviously, again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, and of course, if you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe, because you don't wanna miss the updates on weaning and how it went and how these guys are doing in a couple of days. So hit that subscribe button, it's totally free and it definitely supports the channel. And as always, thanks for coming along.